Hello children and welcome to the session today. Children, the moment you step out of your house into a garden, what do you see? You see a lot of green plants. Those green plants liven up your mood, however gloomy you are feeling, right? And these plants grow in the soil. Now, what does this mean? This means that the plants which enable life on earth grow in the soil. So, what is the soil? The soil is actually a life-giving natural resource. We are going to learn about soil in chapter number 9, soil. We are going to understand the composition formation of soil. We are going to understand the profile of soil, the types of soil, its properties and how the crops grow in soil and what is soil as a natural resource. Children, the soil that we see in the garden is all dark in color. It is very fertile. When you take a handful of soil in your hand and just rub together, what all do you feel? Sometimes you may see an earthworm coming out of it. At other times, you will also find tiny pieces of stone, broken twigs, leaves, etc. So, this soil is made up of many things. Some of these things are non-living. They are inorganic components. Now, what are these inorganic components? These are basically the tiny pieces of stones that you see. Then you will see organic components. Organic means with life. So, what are the components with life in it? You will see tiny leaves, earthworms. You will see decomposing leaves. Now, all these decomposing, dead decaying matter that mixes with the soil forms a very fertile layer on top of the soil which makes it capable of growing crops or plants. This layer is known as humus. Now, children, this soil is formed from inorganic components. So, millions and millions of years ago, when they were huge pieces of rock on earth, then with the heat of the sun over years, the pressure of wind and the pressure of water, these huge rocks broke down to tiny rocks and this converted into fine sand. So, till here it was the inorganic component. Now, when the animals and plants began to die and mix with this sand, it gave rise to a layer of humus. And this layer is what made the soil fertile. This is what made the soil what it is today. But again, is the soil all humus? No, it is not. Humus is only the topmost layer of the soil. Below humus, again, you will find many different things. Now, what are these different things? These things together make up the soil profile. To understand the soil profile, let us watch a video. A vertical section through the soil is called the soil profile. It shows the different layers or horizons of the soil. The uppermost layer of the soil is the darkest in color as it is rich in humus. It is soft, porous and it is home for worms, moles and rodents. It is called the topsoil or A horizon. Just below the topsoil lies the subsoil or B horizon. It is light in color, harder and has little humus. Roots of trees reach this level. Below the subsoil lies the substratum or sea horizon. It contains lumps of broken rocks. It lacks humus and is hence infertile. Below the bedrock lies the bedrock or D horizon. It is a solid hard layer of weathered rock. Water cannot penetrate this layer. Hence it accumulates here to form the water table. So now we know that the soil has the A horizon, which is the darkest layer, the topsoil, the B horizon and the 
sea horizon. So, we also know now where we can find ground water. Now, the problem is that this composition of soil is not the same everywhere, is it? The plants that you see in Delhi, will you see the same in Jaipur or will you see the same high up in the mountains? No. This is because the kind of soil that is present in different places is very different. There are three main types of soil. There is sandy soil, there is clay soil and then there is loam. Let us watch a video to understand what these three kinds of soils are. On the basis of the size of the rock particles, soil is classified into different types. Sandy soil, the soil particles are large and have large spaces between them. It is very porous and water moves rapidly through it. Hence, it cannot hold much water. It lacks humus. Sandy soil is mostly found in deserts. Clay soil. The soil particles are very small and lightly packed, leaving little space for air. It has a very good water holding capacity. It is sticky and turns hard on drying. It contains mostly clay and a little amount of sand and silt. Loamy soil. It contains equal amount of sand, clay, silt and humus. It has the right water holding capacity and has adequate air spaces between the particles. It is considered the best soil for growing crops. So, we understand from this video that different soils have got different water holding capacities. So, children that means that soil has got properties of its own. Now, what are the different properties of soil? Number one, it will allow water to pass through it. The amount of water that it allows to pass through is called percolation rate. Sandy soil allows all the water to pass through. Clay soil holds the water. Loamy soil holds only the right amount of water required for the plants. The second property is that soil contains moisture in it. Of course, when you water the soil, the excess water goes and some amount will always be there. The third property that is that it also is able to absorb moisture in water and then soil contains air. So, let us do a simple experiment to find out that soil contains water, soil contains air. Let's do this experiment. Take some garden soil in a glass, add water to this and stir the soil and water up. You will observe bubbles coming out of the soil. These bubbles are of the air present in the spaces between the soil particles. When water is mixed with soil, water takes up the spaces between the soil particles expelling out air. This proves that soil contains air. Take some garden soil in a glass beaker. Cover it with a watch glass. Heat the beaker containing the soil by placing it on a tripod stand below which a Bunsen burner is placed. You will observe tiny drops of water on the inner side of the watch glass. When soil is heated, the water in the soil gets converted to water vapor. On coming in contact with the watch glass, the water vapor condenses to drops of water. This proves soil contains water on moisture. Through these experiments, we understand the different properties of soil. Now, as responsible individuals, we know that why soil is important. Soil is important for growing crops. Different types of crops require different types of soil. For cultivation of wheat and gram, you require a mixture of clay and loamy soil. For paddy crop, clay soil which is rich in humus is required. For maize and cotton crop, because they require less water, we need sandy soil and for pulses, we need good loam soil. Now, if suppose we do not allow plants to grow, what is going to happen? The roots of the plant that bind the soil together are not going to be there. The topmost layer, which is the most fertile, is going to either be washed away by rainwater or blown away by 
wills. So what is the soil going to become? It is going to become infertile. So where are you going to grow the crops then? That is why it becomes important for us to understand that soil is an important natural resource. Why? Because we grow crops on soil. Soil also has many animals living in it. So we know that earthworms for one live in the soil and when they move up and down the soil, they actually provide air to the soil. So that is why they are called farmers friends. Then the third is that forests also require soil for their growth and if there are no forests on earth, there is going to be no oxygen, there is going to be no transpiration and hence no rain. Then soil also provides minerals, fossil fuels and natural resources. Many important ores are obtained from soil. Clay soil also finds its use in making clay pots and so many other things. So children in this chapter, we have learned so many different things about soil. Let us also understand why and how soil erosion can be prevented. So we just mentioned the blowing away of soil by wind and the washing away of soil by rain. What is this? This is soil erosion. How do you prevent soil erosion? You make check dams. You can cover the barren sand or the barren land area with vegetation. There has to be a proper dumping of biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste so that there is no land pollution. Adding fertilizers and pesticides only in the right amount. Treatment of water before it is allowed to flow into the land areas and proper dis disposal of chemical waste. So these are the methods of preventing soil erosion and these are the methods of preventing soil pollution. So children in this chapter you have learned so many things about soil. You have learned what are the different profiles of soil, the different types of soil, which crop requires what kind of soil. So I hope you have thoroughly understood the chapter. Thank you for joining us.